Hey, it's Norm from Tesla.com. Today I'm joined by Kyle Weens, the CEO of iFixit. Thanks for coming to our office, Kyle. Thanks for having me here. And we're excited to do something really interesting. You guys do great teardowns of electronics, consumer electronics, all sorts of products uh, with the philosophy that people should be able to repair them, right? Right. Our goal is to teach everybody how to fix all their stuff. Yeah, it's, that's important these days because a lot of things you can't repair or, or manufacturers have made it very difficult. It's getting harder. Yeah. As things get smaller, it gets harder to work on things, which is why we put instructions and we show you. And then once there's instructions, then it's quite a bit easier to get in and fix mm -hmm. things. And a lot of people don't know that there's a whole secondary market for replacement parts. Yeah. And they can replace things like from the screen to even the speakers or the, the vibrator in their phone to make mm -hmm. it. Right. Yeah, I mean, pretty much any gizmo today, you can get it, take it apart and repair just about everything. And I mean, parts are available either in the U.S. or even direct from China. And you guys also sell the the uh, tools to help people take these yeah. things apart. We make tools like this. This is what I use to take this phone apart. And this has everything that you need to disassemble just about every electronic gizmo. Awesome. Well, that's why we're here today, because you guys have disassembled the Nexus 5. It's uh, an Android phone I use now. I love it a lot. Um, but we want to show people what exactly went into this, goes into this phone. And, right, what makes it a pretty good phone. Right, or a very good phone. Um, and what makes it different from phones made by other companies, for example, Apple. Right, or I've got my HTC, trusty uh, HTC yeah, here. But so we a can... phone like three years ago made right. very differently than right. phones made today. Right. Um, so we've nulled it out. Uh, you, have you heard of that phrase before, nulling? <laughs> You're introducing the term. I've been, I, I, it turns out I've been doing it for years and I didn't know the word. Yeah, so there's a, a designer in New York, a design firm called uh, Knoll, um, a guy named Hans Knoll, you know, designed furniture, mm -hmm. and uh, artists in New York, Tom Sachs, kind of adopted that. And that's that's the process of laying things out, organizing Laying it them, out, organizing them. Very the like, rigid, right yeah. angles, yeah. It's very pretty. We, There's we a love certain it. level of anal retentiveness that you have to have to be able to do this. Absolutely. Yeah. It makes things look really gorgeous. But uh, conveniently, we've nulled it out so we can call out the parts. Um, so what's the first part that we should look at? OK, so the first thing you're going to do, you get the phone. So this is the back of the phone. Mm -hmm. It says Nexus, so this is just like a, and, and this was relatively easy to, to pop off? Yeah, well it started to be, so, so this is going on the phone, like so. Mm -hmm. And so the first thing we do is we start sticking our fingernails in around the edge and trying to pry it loose or we'll get a guitar pick and, and pop it open. In this case we got a little bit of the way through and then we got stuck. It's like, okay, well let's, let's pause and take a deep breath and look. And it turns out, and uh, it turns out that there's a little bit of adhesive around the bottom here. Not oh. much, and you can sort of see this. So yeah. um, when we hit that, we had to kind of work with a guitar pick in there to get it loose. It's not bad, it's a, it's a, it's a foam-based adhesive, so it's pretty easy. It's, it's an adhesive that's designed to be removed. And so, glue is something we find on a lot of electronic products today. We do, and we get very concerned when we see glue on a case because it means, I mean, you've got something like the battery. Everybody needs to replace the battery in their phone every year or two. It's just something, I mean, the phone could last five or ten years, but mm -hmm. the battery's only going to last a year or two, so you've got to be able to get into the phone. So uh, batteries used to be modular, like I have, so this HTC, uh, the back panel just pops mm -hmm. off, and then the battery comes out, and then you could actually carry a couple extra batteries around with you. Yeah. With these thinner phones, they're going away from these readily removable batteries to something that's a little bit more integrated. Um, but in the case of this, uh, once you sort of know that there's adhesive there and you work your way through, pops off and you can get right at the battery. Hmm. So that battery looks almost like the battery you had in your the HTC Evo, except it, the connection is, isn't something you just slot in. Right. Very similar, but it doesn't, it's got a, uh, and it's a little, little tiny surface mount connector on there. Ah. Uh, so you got to be a little bit careful when you're, when you're removing this compared to you know, the classic way that you do a battery connector, which is... It just has a few contact points. Just the contact points there, yeah. What should people know about when they're removing the battery from the back of the case or from the phone? The trick with this connector is you want to get your fingernail underneath it. So this uh, connects on to the, the main board mm -hmm. there, uh. and you can kind of hear a click when I... Uh, so, when when you when you want to pop it off, you just get your fingernail under on one side and pop it off, and it comes right off. Oh, there you go. Um, okay. You don't want to use an aggressive amount of force because you can actually pop the connector off the main board. But in this case, I mean, this seems it, it's a little bit of a unique shape. Yeah. Uh, but it's overall something that 
totally anybody. So I would consider this a user replaceable battery. Anybody should be able to get in, drop a battery in. My mother should be able to get in here <laughs> and, and replace the battery. But you are going to need instructions to tell you where to get the adhesive and the tabs off. Absolutely. And, and then the battery slots into the case, and uh, that also has a little bit of adhesive? Or is it just nestled in Yeah, there? so when we, <laughs> when we pulled it out, you know, the battery is sitting in here, uh, and uh, it, you know, you'd shake it like this, and the battery wouldn't come out. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of fun. Uh, so they used a very, very tiny amount of adhesive underneath the battery. Um, just around the edge here, you can see this black strip yep. is an adhesive. Uh, so that's enough to hold the battery securely in place without making it hard. You can see I'm popping the battery in and out, and it's securing back down. Uh, so this is, you need, you need the battery to be secure so as you drop it, the battery doesn't shake around inside the case. But you don't want to glue it down to the extent that Apple has done with their phones where it's so much glue that it's, it's very challenging to remove. Now when someone's looking online, for example, for a replaceable battery, are there any particular manufacturers they should look for? Is it okay to find a battery that's a higher capacity, at the same size? What are, the, what are the warning things? You're not generally going to find, I mean, the, the capacity of these batteries is dictated by the size, so you're not generally going to find some better battery mm -hmm. chemistry. Uh, I would just say get, get a battery from a reputable source and don't be afraid to pay a little bit more. Okay. Because uh, there's a spectrum. It, you're not necessarily going to always be able to get an OEM LG battery. You're going to have to get an aftermarket battery. Uh, you just want to buy it from somebody that stands behind their, their parts. And from your experience, those batteries, even though they're not from the manufacturer, they will still last just as long. Yes. Yeah, I mean, this is a uh, lithium battery is a commodity component. There's a lot of, I mean, there, a lot of companies that make very high quality batteries. It's fine. You just don't want the absolute bottom of the barrel. All right. One more thing to note on the back of uh, this case is that there's also this piece here. Yeah. And that. And you see that, and it looks a little bit like a like a saucer or yeah. a, or a, a battery. Uh, you know, computers used to have little watch batteries in them. That's not what this is. Uh, and if it, it's actually kind of cool, you can see there's two little springs on the side of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the vibrator. Ah. And they used these uh, metal contacts on the rest of it, but they wanted to use springs on the vibrator to be a little bit more of a vibration resistant <laughs> connection. Because when you want the vibrator to actually have an electrical connection is when it's vibrating. So this has a little motor inside it that's spinning around that's a, a little bit off center so that it shakes the phone. And this is also user replaceable. Uh, yeah, I would, I'm not sure if this easily pops off of here or if, we don't see vibrators themselves breaking all that often. Mm -hmm. So I would say I, if I were going to replace this, I don't think it pops off. I'd probably just replace the entire back panel. Got it. And you'll see uh, integrated in here, I didn't peel this up, but this is your NFC. Yeah. Uh, and does it have wireless charging? It does have wireless charging. Yeah. So this is uh, the, uh, the QI, Qi standard. Okay. And uh, Google sells uh, with the Nexus 4 and Nexus 5, okay. they had charging pads. So this, uh, I mean, they're using the same circuit here, or the same wiring for both NFC and for, because it's the same sort of antenna yep. size for both. Uh, it's interesting, in the environmental community, there's a lot of debate about wireless chargers, because hmm. the efficiency of the power charger is so a huge part of uh, the overall energy impact of these things. And so when you go to a wireless charger, you have <laughs> very low energy yep. efficiency. Yeah. So if you want to be super green, I would say plug your phone in instead of using the wireless charger. Sacrifice that little bit of convenience. Yes. And don't pay for the $50 accessory. Yes. <laughs> so uh, next up, uh, you have, uh, we talked about the battery. So what's this here? All right, so this is the main board. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I noticed about the main board was the circle in the center of it. And then you can see right beneath it, there's this, there's this uh, I mean, cube thing. So the, the cube, that's actually the, the flash for the camera. And this uh, circle, it's actually cut out in the, uh, in the board, so it's just a little bit recessed. And that's actually where the vibrator goes. Uh -huh. So this, um, this goes... Slots right on top of that right back there. plate. Yeah. Uh, and then you'll see there's a hole in the main board. Uh, so we have a round hole behind it, square hole there, and that's where the, 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 the camera, camera unit goes, the camera unit goes right. in there. So the main board was connected to this back plate and it was screwed in. Yes, uh, and pretty straightforward to, to remove. So overall, I mean, this is exactly the opposite of Apple's product designs, <laughs> where this is very straightforward to get in. We had reasonable screws, uh, you know, and, and so if you, if you had water damage and it was just the main board that, that was uh, the problem, you could just swap that out. And so the main board here uh, has, it's basically the brains and like the, the nervous system of the, the smartphone. You have the SOC on here, it's Qualcomm, mm -hmm. uh, Snapdragon 800. 
Um, and at 2.3 gigahertz, mm -hmm. yep. which is uh, the same clock speed as my laptop. I know, it's insane. <laughs> well, that's, that's the max. So it clocks up, sure. but then there's obviously, they, they clock it down when it gets too So hot. if you want to set your pocket on fire, it's the same clock speed as my laptop. That's right. Okay. Um, is that also where the, the memory lives? Yeah, so the, there's, um, all right, so this is SanDisk uh, flash here. So that's the main memory of the of the device. So this is NAND flash. You can get flash memory from a bunch of different uh, providers. We might have to take, a, we could take apart five different phones and might, might find five different suppliers. So mm -hmm. SanDisk is making this flash, but it could be Samsung, it could be, it could be Hynix. Uh, there's a pretty broad spectrum of suppliers. And within everything connected to this main board, how much is replaceable here, or if you wanted to replace it, you just have to buy it on, on the, the main board. board. So yeah, people always say, "Can I upgrade the storage?" Yeah, exactly. uh, you need about a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> in equipment to replace that chip. Right. So it can be done. You just have to be a really cool person. Yeah, it, it's easier just to buy the whole new main board or buy a phone yes. with higher capacity to start yes. with. Yeah, because does this have a? Uh, this doesn't have a SD card. Either. No, nope, absolutely yeah, not. So no, no. So integrated storage. So we talk about uh, the memory was in the back. That was here, and on front here, that's your SOC, your Qualcomm. Right, that's the main processor. And, and then, that, that, by the way, so that's a multi-level chip. The flash is actually on top of the processor. Mm. So there's there's usually three layers sandwiched together with uh, bonds inside the chip connecting the three. So it's like you get three chips in one. And then that's where your uh, SD card goes, or I'm sorry, your, your, uh, SIM, your, card. your SIM card goes. Yep. There. And I have actually never seen a uh, main board before with the uh, LED flash integrated onto it. And they're doing that for uh, so they could use a bit of a brighter, I mean that's a pretty big LED, and they mounted it on the board so that they could get maximum thickness, because if they'd made it separate then they would have, like, have, to have, they would have had to have a connector and it would have uh, increased the thickness of the phone. So overall, uh, the, the, the thickness of these devices is really dictated by a combination of the thickness of the display mm -hmm. and the uh, camera. Oh, okay. So the thicker that you make the camera, the better your optics are. All right, so that's a good time to talk about the camera next. Yeah. So the camera, uh, you see we've got the, the hole in yeah. the back of the, uh, right? And then this is a little mid-frame assembly that adds some structural rigidity to it. So no electronics in that, this mid-frame. No electronics in the mid-frame. So that uh, goes onto the back here. And you can see that's got our camera lens. And it's, it's kind of fun. A, a lot of the design of these devices is around making them as thin as possible. So you can see with this plastic frame, the camera lens is actually offset a bit. And that's so that the camera can sit on there. And that bezel right flush there, against that does nothing for optics. It just holds the lens, on the small part, the right. real small part. And that's it kind of protrudes on the back. Yes. Uh, and then and so you can see this here. Even though we have this plastic piece in the camera, they're making this as thin as possible. Mm. Uh, and then they didn't. The, the circuit board adds thickness to the device, so the the camera actually goes through the main board. So that's how you make a phone thin: is you put holes in components so you can get all the way through. Right. LG had to source out that camera module from you know, a company like Sony, right. and so that's why they can't control exactly how how thick that camera module well, is. Well, th there's a lot of pressure to make these cameras thinner, and in general, the crappier the camera, the thinner it is. So mm -hmm. this is the front-facing camera, right? Or, right? This is like a smaller version And you of can that see one. the front-facing camera is actually quite a bit thinner than the rear-facing camera, uh, but they, you want better optics for the main camera. So this is why you see some camera, like uh, uh, Nokia has that phone with the- Right, the 41 megapixels. Right. right, and it's a really thick camera mm -hmm. because you need the, uh, the, the size for the optics. It's a huge bulge. Right. right. This is an area where Apple has really been pushing the envelope on having the absolute best camera and a small form factor. Oh, very cool. All right, so what's this over here? All right, so this is our uh, USB port. And then also there's um, a number of these little copper connectors on here that go, so this sits right in here. And so it's pretty common in, in these device designs to have a cable that can, connects to a bunch of parts and then one connector that goes to the main board. So you can see there's a bunch of pins off of this that go onto the main board. So this is collecting a bunch of these inputs from some of the, the things that plug onto the, the case and then routing it up to the main board. Kind of going around the battery. Right. Uh, and what I thought was the coolest thing about this design was how modular some of these components were. Yeah. So, like, this is the headphone jack. Okay. And this thing is crazy. You can see the circle that. Yeah, I'll put it there so you can see. 
Uh, so I have never seen a headphone jack with the, with the pens on the side of it before. So the headphone jack is very frequently something that breaks. Uh, and you know, you're, you're running along, you catch a branch on a tree, and you bust the headphone jack. Well, in this case, it's a completely discrete part where somebody like Apple might like integrate it onto the main board mm -hmm. or integrate it onto an expensive cable. This is, this is a standalone part. Uh, and super easy to get in and swap this out. So on, on my phone, so I would like to replace the headphone jack on my phone because it's a little bit janky. Uh, it's about an hour, an hour and a half of very complex disassembly to replace the headphone on the iPhone. Uh, this is on the 4S. Uh, on this, you know, this could be a five minute job. Yes, yeah, pop open the back and, and this just, it, the contacts are just touching the, yeah. the main board and just pop that out and right. swap it in. And so one argument for gluing things together is, well, it's cheaper to make the product that way because mm. uh, you can have robots assemble things. And they say, well, it takes a lot of time to pay a person to put screws in, to you know, screw in every single. So in those factories, when, you know, when they're assembling these phones, every time it's a screw, it's a physical person. It's a person. It's a person screwing yeah. in. Otherwise, robots can slap that battery in there. Right. I mean, I've seen the, the iPad assembly. They've got a robot that goes over, squirts glue on, slaps the battery down. <laughs> so that what you'd imagine the, the manufacturer in the future. Yeah. Uh, but that's a problem for repairability. It's also a problem for recyclability. This is not a particularly recyclable product. This, this phone is actually reasonably good in terms of recyclability. Mm. Uh, so I get really excited when I see modular components like this. And there's, I mean, this is a thin design. So this is a uh, product design that's easy to manufacture, easy to repair, very modular. And uh, it doesn't add any thickness at all to the, to the product. So people say, well, is it possible to make a high-end phone that's just as good as the iPhone and is repairable? And I think this phone Absolutely. shows that the yeah. answer is yes. And you know, one of the things they did was they, they chose a big screen. And with the bigger screen, you kind of naturally have to have slightly larger chassis. Chassis, so you actually have the room to have these nestle components in. Right, and if you look at the so the overall display assembly here, this is where a lot of the thickness of the unit comes from, is in the actual display, uh, and that I mean there's there's trade-offs. So I would say overall the thickness trade-offs on this device weren't making it more repairable. It was uh, just to, to integrate the the particular display technology that they wanted to use. So you talk about the display as one cohesive unit, and that's what this really is. You can't really take that LCD out of there. Not really. So I can, I can pull this uh, cable off, but the rest of this is all one complete unit. So you've got this uh, mid-frame assembly that's cast out of aluminum, and then you've got the LCD behind that, and then you've got the glass and the, and the frame, and this is all integrated. So from a repair perspective, you're going to replace this whole thing. Wow. And something like that is around $200. I was now. looking, yeah, these are, these are around $200 right now. Over time, the price will come down. But the reason that it's so expensive is you've got buttons integrated, mm. you've got I mean, buttons, and yeah. Where if you're just going to replace the LCD, maybe you could get that for $40, getting the whole thing integrated together specific for this phone drives the cost up. Over time, I hope that we'll see, we'll see the cost of this repair go down. Uh, but that's uh, everything in this is pretty repairable. The screen is on the expensive side right now. I mean, if a phone is supposed to last you five years, you know, three years down the line, people are going to be getting rid of their old phones and maybe selling them. And you can maybe buy a phone for 100 bucks yeah. and just pull that screen out. Yeah. Well, I think that's something we should be putting pressure, because right now there's no way to buy this part from LG or from Google. Right. And I think that for Google, as part of the Nexus program, if you want to sell a phone under the Nexus brand, there should be repair parts available for it. Mm. So the, uh, the Nexus 5 shares a lot of components with uh, LG's other, their other flagship phone, the G2. And how many parts from that can go in the Nexus 5? Do you have any Zero. Idea? Nothing, okay. Every phone on the market is completely separate. Wow. Uh, I mean, every design, basically you decide the external form factor of the phone and then everything else is custom to fit it. So this main board fits down to the sub-millimeter into this frame, into the display. Uh, and, and this is what we have found. If, if you're going to make 20 different models of cell phones, even HTC, they've got 100 phones on the market right now. They're all slightly different from each other, and the parts aren't generally interchangeable. And then the rest of the parts here, you see, you see the SIM card tray. Um, it's another, it looks like another controller board here. Um, this is actually this is the the magnetic shield oh, okay. uh, for the board, and then they also they put a little uh, uh, control board on top of it, uh, which is something we've never really seen before. But the 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 metal shielding here, uh, this snaps on over here, uh, and this is a uh, to isolate the. Uh, circuitry because you've got all sorts of RF signals at very high speeds. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, so they're isolating uh, the circuitry there from the antennas on the phone. And this is something you're going to be able to put back later together 
and have a fully functioning phone. Absolutely. This is the, the phone that we did our teardown. We actually, after we were done with our with our teardown, we did the, the report online for, we put it back together, we used it for a while, and then uh, I took it apart again, bring it here, show you. Oh, so wow. I'm going to put this back together and it'll be a fully functional phone. <laughs> and you guys, for every product you tear down, you give a repairability rating. Yes. And this this phone, the Nexus 5, got a pretty high repairability rating. It did rating. very, very well. So this, uh, this got an 8 out of 10 repairability score, which is very, very good. Uh, and we found, I mean, we were pretty happy with everything in here. We would have preferred a slightly easier to access battery. It would have been nice if there wasn't glue on the back panel. Mm -hmm. uh, we would have preferred if LG had made a service manual available for the phone. Uh, so those are sort of the things that we docked them for, but overall the rest of it, very, very good. And you didn't need a ton of tools to actually take this apart. You laid out almost exactly the tools that you needed, you know, tweezers, a little screwdriver. Right, we need a screwdriver. A we, we use, this is a spudger, this is a black plastic pry tool, and that's pretty much all you need to get into this thing. Well, we, we used a guitar pick to, to pop the adhesive here. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't have a guitar pick, you probably know somebody that plays guitar, but a very thin guitar pick is a really good pry tool. You can also use a spudger to get in. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Kyle. This is a lot of fun, and I hope you guys out there learn a little bit about what goes in the smartphones, even if you don't own the Nexus 5, you know, what to think about when you're shopping for a phone. If something goes bad, you don't necessarily have to go to the store, have it repaired. Right. You can actually go online, find a resource. Yeah, and we have a chart uh, put together with all the phones, uh, repairability scores from 10 all the way down to, down to 1. The worst phone we've ever uh, taken apart is the HTC uh, one. HC1. So if you have a choice for a phone, if you're looking for a flagship Android phone, I would highly recommend the Nexus 5 over the HTC One. That's something interesting to consider. I didn't even think about that. We just think about usability, but there's also repairability yes. as well. Once again, thank you, Kyle. We'll have more with Kyle from iFixit, tearing down all sorts of tech and looking at what makes them work on test.com. I'm Norm. I'll see you next time. Yeah. Bye.